this video, I would like to further our discussion of algorithms and talk about one that was pretty important in Chapter 4, and it's called binary search. Now, binary search offers us the possibility of finding things quicker, especially on larger lists, than something uh, like sequential search. So I'd like to take you through an example here real quick, and then we'll get to look at coded versions. So binary search has, um, has to have a sorted list in order for it to work. So if your list isn't sorted, then you might as well forget binary search altogether. But since I do have a sorted list here, I, the first step is to divide the list in half and examine a midpoint value. So let me do that right now. I'm going to divide this list in half right here because there's eight elements, and I have to choose a midpoint. So my midpoint that I'm going to examine here is 16. So since 16 is my midpoint value, I would ask myself three questions. First of all, is 16 equal to my target value of 10? No, it is not. Is it greater than or less than? Well, it's greater than 10. So I know that I can eliminate this whole half of the list from my search. So the next thing that I, was, I would do is I would repeat this again, but I'm going to, I know that I've already examined 16 through 38, so I can cross that off of my list. And my new maximum value to search would be my midpoint minus 1, and I would have the same minimum. So I'm going to go ahead and, and move forward one. So my new midpoint value for this one would be 5. All right, so that's right in the middle of my list. And I would ask myself, is 5 equal to my target value? No, it is not. So is 5 less than or greater than my target value? It's less than. So this, this part of the list I can eliminate as well. And I basically need to do another iteration. So I'm going to repeat that whole thing again. And now I have a one element list. So I'm going to examine this. And I'm going to ask myself, is this element equal to, less than, greater than my target value? And of course, it is equal to. So I have successfully found my target in this list. But potentially, I could put, if I put in 11, then this would not match. I would have exhausted the list. And therefore, um, I would not find my value. So that could give you an, an, un, another result. All right, but that's how it works. And Let's go ahead and take a, a look at a larger uh, list. All right, so here's a, here's a word list that has 19,910 words in it. And if I were to search this list sequentially, um, it would take me about 9,500 tries to, uh, to find a, a word on average. So... A sequential search might go like this. If I were to push play here, this is going to search every word in order until it finds it. If I search for the word, let's say cool, it has to go through this list 4,183 times in order to find the word cool. So it went through the list in order and it finally came to cool at index 4182. Uh, if I were to repeat that, and I believe the last word was zygote in the list, uh, it would have to go through the entire list to find it. So that's a lot of repetitions. So um, let's see if we can do that faster with binary search. So with binary search, let's search for those same words again. I'm going to search for cool. And if you remember, it took about, uh, well, over 4,000 tries, 4,000 iterations to find it. To search for cool, it takes only 15. So binary search is significantly less work. It's a lot faster on that one. But let's test it again. Let's go for the last word in the list. And here this took 14 iterations. So still very fast compared to sequential search. So for your next exercise in learning algorithms, 
I'd like you to recreate this class that you see here. It's called Search Algorithms, so that's the name of the class, and we're going to be extending this and creating a sequential search search algorithm and a binary search search algorithm. But we're going to reuse some code here, so that's why we're extending it. We're saving ourselves the trouble of having to rewrite this code in the other two classes. We can just inherit it. So we're using the access modifier protected, meaning only subclasses uh, of search algorithms can inherit this stuff. And this first class variable is the word list. So this represents all the words in our list. And I'll go ahead and provide you this list of words. So when you import this, make sure that you put it in this spot here so that it works properly. And I will also pro provide you another class called ListMaker, which is going to generate a list, put it in memory, and then you can assign it to word list uh, in these classes that I'll show you in a second. Then this class variable word means that's the word that we're trying to find. And this Boolean value called is found. Obviously, this is a flag for we, whether we found it or we didn't find it. And then you have uh, a little method here that we can inherit that returns a string that the user will input and they get to decide what search to or what word to search for. So those are reusable lines of code that we're going to want to use for both of these classes. All right, so sequential search and binary search are extensions of the sequential search class. We extended sequential search or I'm sorry, we extended search algorithms and sequential search is like a custom modification of that. So we're inheriting everything that we just saw in search algorithms, but we are going to implement a different version of the search method in each. So the search method for sequential search works like this. Let me go ahead and open this up. And the first thing is we have a target value. All right, so this is the word that we're trying to find, and we're going to pass that in as a parameter. So search accepts one parameter, and it's called target. The next thing is we need to know how big is this list. So I'm calling the total number of words in the list end, and I'm going to count how many iterations that we go through. So once the counter reaches the end of the list, we know we've gone through everything. So uh, that brings us to the loop. So as long as the counter minus 1, which is an index value, because uh, we're going to start at 0, is less than the end of the list, and we haven't found it yet, then we're going to continue on. So if we do find it, there's no reason on us continue on going through the loop. That would be just extra iterations. It'd be a waste of time. So this allows us to kick out of the loop uh, if we do find it. So then we have a, uh, a word, and we're going to assign word the value of whichever um, element that we're on. So if, we're, uh, if our counter is uh, equal to 1,000, then 1,000 minus 1 is 99. So that's 999th element in the word list is going to take that on. And then we have to examine it. So to examine strings, we're going to use word.equals. So word.equals um, is going to return a true-false value. Does the word equal the target? And if it returns true, then it's going to print that we found a match at whatever index that we're on. And our isFound flag turns true which break, will eventually break this condition when the loop checks it again. However, if the word uh, dot equals method returns false, then we're going to say it does not match and increment our counter and go to the next word in the list. So this is going to check every single word in the order that the list goes. 
And if we get all the way through that and we haven't found it, we're going to print the target string was not found. So to test whether or not that works, we're going to instantiate sequential search down here in the main method. And then we're going to, just for courtesy's sake, print out the list size and request input and then search for the word and see what happens. So let me go ahead and push play. We'll search for our word cool again. And here you can see it just wrote out every single step. And as soon as it went around 4,183 4, times, it found it at index 4182, uh, and it exited the loop at that point. OK, so that's how sequential search works. You're going to take what you see here and turn it into binary search. So binary search will be set up just like this. However, I'm not going to be telling you what's inside the search method. For that, the biggest hint that I'm going to give you is what you will see in this diagram. All right, so what uh, is coded inside of that uh, hidden method is the first thing that I ask for is um, I need to input that sorted array and get its target value. Very, very much the same thing that you saw in the method header of the um, sequential search. So let me go back to here. So basically what I'm looking at here is the method header here is identical in binary search. So we can actually look at that right now. So the method headers are exactly the same. They take the same input. OK, back to my diagram. All right, so after it receives that input, it's going to declare three integers, a minimum, a maximum, and a middle. And that will work pretty much the same way as what I showed you at the beginning where we went through this list. All right, so we had um, a midpoint value. But in order to find that midpoint value, um, we had to know what was the beginning of the list. All right, so this was, let me choose a different color here. Three was our minimum. So I'll write min over here. And 38 was our max. So I'll put max over there. All right, so those were our two kind of like bookends for determining the middle. So we know that we knew from that min and max that there were eight elements and we divided the list in half here and examined a midpoint which was 16. All right, so if I were to look at my chart again, so I declare three integer variables, min, max, and middle, and then I want to assign min the value of zero at the very start and max the value of the length of the list. So where I do that in sequential search, bring that up here again, is something like this, word list dot length. That tells me the length of the list. That's our maximum value. All right, so going forward here, now we're going to enter into a loop. So we're, we're constantly asking ourselves in this loop, is min less than or equal to max? If it is, then assign middle the value of the element found at the index that is the middle. So this is the formula here, so it's not too tricky for you. So middle will be equal to that. It's going to take the value of this formula. And then move on to this decision point. Is the target value equal to the middle? And if it is, we found it. If not, we have to ask ourselves, is the target value less than or greater than the middle index? And if it is less than, then we know that we can eliminate the list prior to that. And we can set our new min value to middle plus 1. But if it was greater than, that means that the maximum value is going to be middle minus one. And then we repeat our iteration. We go back up to the top and we keep doing it again. So um, 
this is going to repeat and repeat and repeat until min uh, less than or equal to max is either returning us the target value as it follows through here or it doesn't which means the target is not in the list so um, at this point I'll let you experiment with a uh, way to come up with a binary search that will fill uh, this part of that method and it's not that different from what you see here in sequential search however you will have a min max and middle uh, variable that will be managing the loop lastly I'd like to show you how to get set up for this project you probably already have a chapter 4 uh, project file but if not click file new Java project and just simply type chapter 4 up here in your project name make sure that you have at least Java uh, 1.6 1.7 uh, or 1.8 that would be fine for for here some of the lab computers will default to something else but uh, just change it to that and click finish all right once you have the project all set up we need to create a package within source so we're going to, you can click uh, New, Package. This is also under File, New, Package, or perhaps you have a button right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click the button. And package names are lowercase, so I'm going to call this Searching. And then click Finish. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to import a couple of files. So I have those on my desktop already. These will be posted on our online classroom, so you can just download them. And the list maker and search algorithms, that goes right into the searching project or uh, package. So we're going to go ahead and copy those. And if you open those up, you should see this code here for searching algorithms. List maker will have this in there for you. Um, you don't need to understand what is in ListMaker, by the way. ListMaker is uh, something in a, from a later chapter. We'll um, get back to that uh, when the time comes. But for now, you should understand search algorithms and how to extend it. So to extend it, what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new class. I've got a button right here. But again, you can simply go to File, New, and select class if you don't have that button and up here it says I'm in the searching package then I just need to add into this uh, sequential search and I'm going to check the uh, method stub for public static void main which allows you to test that class while you develop it and its super class is going to be search algorithms. So I can put that right there. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And notice how uh, it added our main method and our, uh, it says that we are extending from search algorithms. So that's pretty handy that it can do all that for you. All right, and then you're going to do the same thing again for binary search. So we'll call this binary search. And its super class is also search algorithms. And we'll make a main method in there so that we can test it as we develop it. All right, so you should have all of the classes here that you need. However, you also need the word list. So I have that on my, de my desktop as well. And all you really need to do is just drag and drop that list into your project um, top level folder. So if you do that, uh, you'll get a pop-up box that says, select how you want this to be imported. We want a copy of it that retains the original in case we somehow alter the file and need to fix it again. All right, so that contains the list of words and uh, list maker will use that to create a list and then you can extend um, or use the methods to search that list all right so that gets you all set up uh, some of these comments you can take out those are just little to do's uh, but if you have any questions or if you get stuck getting set up please let me know and I'll and I'll help you uh, get started